What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna be installing a Panhard bar from Meyer Racing on my 66 Mustang. This is one of those projects that I've been looking forward to. In fact, it's been several months in the, you know, trying to get things put together and get stuff what I wanted to do. I did a little bit of research on the various bars out there and I think, I think we found the right bar for this car. Let's head over the bench real quick and take a look at the parts that we're gonna install. So the first two pieces we're gonna look at are the spring plates that come in this kit. One of the things I like about this kit is it includes the passenger side spring plate because it's not, it's not needed for what we're doing with this, the parts we're gonna install, but it's a matching set, which I like. And in addition to that, you've got these, these stra strap down locations. You know, if you were gonna haul your car somewhere, you've got one on each side, whereas some kits just have just the one side. This one includes both, so I really do like that part. And so from here, we'll take a look at the next part. This is a frame mount, and this is gonna go on the passenger side. If you look at from the back of the car, this is gonna, how it's gonna mount. Get that out of the way. And so you've got, if you've got the frame coming up through here, we're gonna have a bar going across here and a bar going across here. And that's actually, this section down here is gonna mate up with this end of the spring plate with the, with the adjustable bar. So that's the one side, the one, the passenger side frame mount. And this is the driver's side frame mount. It will, it will mount this way and sit like that if the frame was, was coming through here like so. And then also they include plates that go on the back side to help box this in. And that's these guys right here. And we'll wait to save those until the end and then we'll, we'll weld them on once we weld this in place. Then we have this bar. This has a kink in it. So it's designed to go around the differential housing. So we're gonna put this, we're gonna put our end link in here and it's gonna mount up to here. It's gonna go all the way across and we're gonna mount on this side. Now these bars are intentionally uh, several inches long, like four to five inches long, because they're made to work with several Ford cars, you know, between the Falcon and the Mustang. There's several cars that this will fit, but because the frame location is, is different, you know, this way, uh, from one car to the next, and you'll have a variation just in the same car. Uh, you know, the 66 Mustang I have you know, the, the spacing between the frames could be off from the other 66 Mustang that I had. So the nice thing about this setup is it gives us, give us a long bar and then we can cut it to the right length that we need and then we'll weld in the uh, threaded bung that goes in here and that will, that will work on this end of the, of the frame mount. And the last part is this adjustable bar and I really like this. This is aluminum and it's got this fluted design on it which is slick. And so we're gonna use this to adjust. When we get everything dialed in, it's gonna go between here and then it's gonna go between the spring plate on the other end and then we'll also have these adjustments. We'll talk about the various adjustments here, um, but this is how it'll look. And then we can put, you know, uh, we'll, we'll load this thing up as we get the car dialed in. And the last part of this is just all the hardware that comes with it. And everything is here. The only thing it doesn't include is the welder that you need to, to install this in the car. But let's get these out and take a look at the parts and see where they go. So I laid these out and the positions are gonna be on the car. If you're looking from the back of the car, this is gonna be on the passenger side. This is gonna be on the driver's side. Again, driver's side are here. And the reason why is this, this fastener right here is shorter than the rest of them. And that's because this rod end fits right inside here. There's no spacers. And so this is gonna be a shorter bolt. Also, the gas tank's gonna be really close to this, so that's why the bolt is shorter. But on the other ones, you're gonna have these, there's two different types of spacers here. Uh, these bigger ones are gonna go with this guy. And this is gonna fit on this part. And this is gonna be on the passenger side frame mount. And then this goes into the end of this bar, we're going to put it in here, we're going to weld it in place, and this is the one that we're going to cut to length, it's got that kink in it to go around the, the housing on the rear end, so this is going to feed on that side, this one goes in here, again this one, we'll, put, we'll cut this to length, put it in here, and this goes with, with this end. And down here are the left hand and right hand uh, rod ends that go on, and you can tell this has got a gold color to that, to that nut on there, this is a silver color. Uh, so they do need to be a right and left because when we put it into this bar and we spin this bar, we need to be able to, to push these in and out to, to set the load on this. And these ones, uh, these have a little bit longer fasteners than this one over here. These are going to go inside any one of these spots, depending on where you're going to put it for your car. And then same thing on this one's going to go on this end and you're going to need these little spacers for that. So here's what it's going to look like inside the car with everything in the position it's gonna be in. Let's go ahead and get the car jacked up and then we're gonna start, first thing we wanna do is put the spring plates in the car and get those installed. So now that we got the car jacked up on jack stands, we're gonna go ahead and take the spring plates off of both sides. And this is a good time to mention also, you should replace the bolts uh, while you do this. And you can also buy those from Meyer Racing too. I got my set from them as well. Um, and we're gonna take these off, 
put the new bolts on, the new spring plates on, and then from there that'll start to set the distances of where like the frame mount and stuff is gonna go. So we'll get to that there in a minute. And while you're watching me put these spring plates on, I wanted to mention that I was working a deal with Meyer Racing to where I can get you guys 5% off of your purchases for these Mustang uh, suspension and components and stuff like that and body parts and stuff for, from Meyer Racing. If you put code CRUISEVIEW in that when you go to check out, you'll save 5% on anything that you buy there. You know, this um, some of the other things I've done with other vendors where they were able to give me a discount on the parts. Uh, I didn't do that with them. I actually, this time I got you guys one of those checkout codes that you can use. Um, and this is actually saves you guys money now instead of uh, instead of me. So anyways, yeah, use, cro use code CRUISEVIEW when you check out at uh, Meyer Racing and save 5%. You know, now's a good time to point out that what's nice about these uh, spring plates is that they accept 7 16 and half inch uh, U-bolts for depending on what type of size you guys have. If you have, you know, the nine inch rear end with the larger tubes or whatever. So I do like that they offer that flexibility. Also, I was trying to point out earlier, these little capture pieces on here that, you know, that kind of center this spring plate on the, the leaves themselves, which I really like. You probably noticed when I was putting this up, I had to jack this up because the location of this is lower than what these fully extended shocks can reach. So I just had to jack it up and, and, and then put it on there and then we're good. So we're still, uh, we're still supported by, you know, on the, the frame here with the car, we're not supporting the axle because we don't want to do that yet when we set everything up. So from here, this is where we're going to want to go ahead and uh, we're going to attach the lower bar, the, the adjustable bar on here and bring it over so that when we kind of set up the, the frame mount piece that comes down here that hangs down with all the holes in it, that we can get it set up. Now the thing that, that's most important is that it's not so much critical where you put it, you know, like if you measure from the back of the car, you know, on the frame up here, you know, where you put it. But what's important is depending on the, the axle that you have, what you want is that bar to clear the back of this housing, depending on what housing you have. Some, you know, like the nine inch has that larger bump right here for the, for the ring gear. Um, so when you put that bar in here, make sure it clears this housing. Nothing touches as the suspension travels. We don't want that to touch at all. Um, and then we want it to be parallel also with this tubes here. So depending on what you have, that's going to dictate where that frame mount and that, that whole piece that hangs down here is going to go. So let's get that set up and we'll start to see where everything's going to fall out. All right, before we put this bar into the spring plate, I wanted to point out something real cool. See how you got, there's this end, there's, it's just a machined end. But if you flip it around, see in this end, you've got that little bar or that little stripe in there. That's to let you know that this is the left hand thread and the other end is the normal right hand thread. Just this cool stuff like that that they put in there just to make it easy. So when you're trying to thread something in, you don't force it in there because you know that this is the, the left hand end. It doesn't matter which way you go, you know, this way or the other way. I'm just going to put it in this way just for, for now at least. And what we want to do is we want to just put the bolt in through the, through the eyelet here just to hold it in place. And then you got to get an idea how this is going to start to look. Now what we want to do is put in this piece here. And I was telling you how we got to make sure that this thing lines up parallel with the axle and clears the, the housing here. But when you start to put this up, I'm going to hit my exhaust. And you may hit your exhaust. I don't know how yours is routed, but as, you, as I put this up inside here, for this thing to be sitting where it needs to be sitting, it's hitting my exhaust. So I'm going to have to cut my exhaust out. Uh, again, you may not have to depending on how your setup is in your car. Uh, in my car, I definitely have to do it. Also, the same thing for the, the driver's side mount. The way this is going to need to go up like this, it's actually going to be sitting right behind my exhaust tube up here. So I'm going to have to cut that out as well. 
That's fine. What I'll do is I'll just cut it off with the mufflers there and I'll figure out what I'm going to do a little bit later. But I do need to get these out of the way and you may do that depending on the exhaust that you have in your car. So real quick, I'm going to get this out of the way. I'm going to cut those pipes out and then we'll come back and start locating where this, this frame mount is going to go. All right, so with the exhaust out of the way, now we can go ahead and start to locate the frame mount for this other end because the exhaust tubes are not gonna be blocking it. And what we wanna do is go ahead and, like I said before, put this end of the adjustable link in the spring plate. And then we're gonna put this up over here on this side and kind of get an idea of where we wanna go. It's kind of a trial to kind of see where things fit. And what we'll wanna do is we're gonna put this up here. I'm just gonna clamp it up there. I'm gonna measure the distance from this bar to the axle and from this bar to the axle so I can get about the same distance away so that it's parallel with the, uh, with the axle. Also, we have plenty of clearance inside here, so that's good. So this next part took a little bit of just kind of just set up before we got going here. I went ahead and plugged in the end of this crossbar into that frame mount. And then I went ahead and just clamped up this other frame mount on the frame here and put this rod end uh, inside there just to kind of hold it in place. I put that bung that goes on there so we can kind of get an idea of where this bar is going to go. And remember, you want this kink in the bar to clear the housing is what we're looking for. And so what we want to do is... When we put this up here, we want to make sure that everything kind of aligns up because as you rotate this bar, it changes its position. This end of the bar, the position moves front to back as you rotate this bar. So you're going to have to dial that in and figure out where the best place is on your car to put this, this upper mount over here. And I'm finding that on my car, that the, the ears of this mount almost touching the, the trunk, uh, the lower part of the trunk here, is about seems to be about the right spot for my car and then that way I can put this up here and we'll mark this later on and get this thing cut to length but for now getting the location of these uh, frame mounts is really the kind of what I'm looking for so I'm happy with that end I'm happy with this end so what I want to do is I'm going to get my paint pen out now I'm going to mark you know on either side of the of the frame mounts with the paint pen so I know where I need to grind off this undercoating that I have in my car and get the metal nice and bare and ready to go to weld these and these frame mounts on So guys, now we got that all welded in. Obviously, I didn't show a lot of the welding and the grinding, lots of grinding. I'm not, you know, I'm not the best welder, but that little tiny, you know, flux core wire feed welder gets the job done, gets the stuff welded in place. Um, I did notice that my frame rails, there's some rust in some spots, so it was a little thin, so you guys might have the same problem. So just be careful you don't blow through the frames when you're welding these, these uh, frame mounts up. But they're in place, they're welded up, uh, they're grounded, gr ground down and painted, and I think we can move on to the next step. So what I want to do is I'm going to put in just the lower bar here. We don't really need to, but I'm going to put that one in, just make sure everything lines up good. And then I'm going to put the upper bar in, and then we can mark that upper bar length. 
and take it out and cut it to the right length so we can get the get the upper bar done. So for this end link here, really the best place for it is its lowest mount. And the reason why is it creates the best triangle for supporting this. The lower this point is to wherever this bar is, the stronger this piece will be. If you put it up really high, you could have more stress on this system. Now it may be negligible, but if you can put this lower, it's not going to change anything with respect to, with respect to how the car handles. It just this creates this makes this a stronger setup. However, but you, what you will find is wherever you put this lower this upper bar, it may get in the way of your exhaust. So if you were in a position where you needed to have this up higher so that the exhaust can fit through here better or whatever you're doing, you may find that that's what you want to do. Uh, so I think for this one, I'm just going to set this up in the middle. And the reason why is there is some still there's some play in the threads that we can thread this in and out. And then also on the other end, there's a you know there's a slot about a half inch movement so you can fine tune these things as much as you'd like. Put this on here and kind of eyeball where we're going to be. We'll put a mark on there and that's where I'm going to cut it and the nice thing is is I'm, I'm cutting this just a little bit short uh, so that I because I do have a little bit of threads that I can that I can pick up on here. You know if you're within a quarter of an inch of where it needs to be you're going to be fine. So we're going to cut this off drill a hole so that I can plug weld this to the bung and weld around the bung here on this, this step right here. So let's get that done. we can go ahead and start putting this whole assembly together now. Uh, what we want to do is get, so we're going to have a washer on here, the bolt goes in, then we're going to have a spacer, which is these thicker, larger spacers of the two different types in the kit. Then we'll have the rod end, another spacer, a washer, and the nut on the back side. And this may take two people to do, so you just want to take your time and get it set up right and you'll get everything put together. And we'll come back and tighten this down when we're all done. So on this end, we're just going to put the short bolt. Remember, the, the short bolt of all the whole kit goes in here. We're going to put the bolt in from the back side. And we just need a washer on each end and the nut, and we're set. And now we can go ahead and tighten this side up. Now we want to go back down to this end and just tighten up this end of the bar. Now that everything's dialed in on the other end. You may be wondering, well, what do you do with your exhaust before, <laughs> now that we had to cut it off? Um, I don't really want this kind of hitting the, the axle, so what are my options here? Well, I need to get to the, to the muffler shop and, and get them to fix all this stuff and dial it in so that it fits with my whole suspension setup and everything. But in the meantime, um, what I've got are just some of these generic tips that I'm just going to just tack it in place. Just put it inside there. And just put a couple tacks on it just so that it's kind of angling, angling down a little bit. It's, it's, not, it's going to be louder than my normal exhaust, but it's just temporary. It just gets me to the muffler shop so I can get my setup fixed. So I'll do that. But before, we, uh, before I finish this up, let's go talk about the, uh, the rear bar and the setting and how we're going to do that. So now comes the part where we're going to want to do a final install on this bar. But what I want to do is I want to... I want the car to be sitting on the axle. So whether you put it on the ground and do this or jack up the axle and the axle is supporting the weight of the car so that the suspension is compressed, that's what we want to do first before we set this bar in its final location. Also, to, to highlight what you want to do with these holes, the short story is if you put it in the top hole on both sides, your car is going to oversteer. And if you put it on the lower, the lowest hole on both sides, the car will tend to understeer. Now, it's a little more complicated than that. You, there, there's a lot more involved. But if you if you want a, a car that's what we'll call safer, 
put the bar in the lowest setting and the car will tend to understeer and the car won't snap around on you. And as you get better at driving and you're more comfortable with it, you can raise the bar uh, to the higher points and you get this back in to kind of follow around as you go around the corners, the back end will come around and, and you can steer with the throttle and that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then also you want this bar to be as close to horizontal as possible. So there's three adjustments on this side. What is there? There's seven, eight, nine adjustments on this side uh, so that you can dial the bar in to the perfect height. And it depends on, you know, if you've got, um, you know, different kind of springs than I have or whatever, but you want this bar to be as level as possible. So we're going to go ahead and lower the car onto the axle and then we'll set the bar in the spot that I want it. Now that we got the car lowered on the jack stand so that the weight of the car is on the axle, so this bar will be where we want it to be. Now what I want to do is I'm actually going to put it, I think I'm going to put it in this middle section here and kind of start in the middle and then I can go up or down. Uh, you guys may decide to go down, whatever you want to do on your bar. And then over here, well, on the other end, what we're going to want to do is I'm going to get my level out and find out where the level is on this and find out what eyelet that is on that end and then uh, adjust the rod end, you know, in or out uh, so that we can adjust the, because, the, you know, the holes over here are, are kind of moved, you know, in and out. So we'll, we'll adjust this and get this thing dialed in right. So for these, this end, we're going to use these smaller little spacers in between here. So again, just like the bar up above, you know, just a little bit of patience and get, you'll get these lined up. And if you've got some help, I'd use it if you could, because these things can be just a little bit of a pain to get, you know, lined up right. And we can go ahead and tighten this side down all the way. And just like this side, we'll go ahead and put uh, put these little spacers, little spacers in here to set up this other end of the bar. All right, now these are secure. Now we can adjust this, and we want to put a little bit of load on this bar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Just thread it out a little bit, and you probably can't tell on the camera, but this is just ever so slightly moving outward. And what we're doing is we're just putting a little bit of load on this bar so that everything is nice and tight. And when we get that done, we can go ahead and thread the, both of the, these set nuts down, these, these jam nuts, and then we're gonna wanna tighten those. Also, don't forget to tighten the ones up top here. I forgot to do that. All right guys, everything is in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheels on and then drop the car on the ground. All right guys, that's it. That is the Meyer Racing Panhard bar on a 66 Mustang. It's gonna be very similar whether you got the newer Mustang or whether there's the, the Comet and the Galaxy and the Falcon and the you know, Fairlane, all that kind of stuff. It's all gonna be very similar to, to how we did it on this car. Um, also, remember that that suspension um, or the, uh, the setting of that bar, lower the bar, it's safer. The car will more understeer. Uh, the higher the bar, the more it will oversteer if you're looking for that kind of, of, uh, of handling out of your car. Uh, also, I wanted to cover real quick that this doesn't change the spring rate of your, of your suspension. This doesn't change the comfort of your car in terms of how it rides. All it does is it's going to keep this axle centered underneath the body. And when you're going around a corner um, in an extreme scenario, the car is going to want to lean to the outside of the corner and of the turn. <clears throat> and the suspension, the tires and stuff are going to be where they are. The body's going to want to kind of go to the outside. And what you're going to do, you're going to put the load actually on the, the leaf springs and the shackles, you know, the bushings inside the shackles is where the load's going to be to keeping this axle underneath the car. And if you have this setup, this panhard bar, what it does is as the car leans and tilts and wants to, you know, as you go around a corner, that, that the, light, the axle is not going to move relative to the car. It's going to stay right where it needs to be. And then as you're starting to come out of the corner and the car starts to lean back, what you're not going to have is any kind of 
snap action of the axle where it wants to move real quick because of that load that was on the suspension. Now it's on the bar, which is, gets transferred to the chassis, to the frame, and so that axle is going to be centered right where it needs to be at all times. It's, it's going to be predictable. It's going to be what you want. What it won't do is what a sway bar would do. This, this is something that I think you should do first. Uh, I did the sway bar first on my last car. I should have done the pan hard bar first. I learned from that. So I did the pan hard bar here. If I find that I still want the sway bar, I can add that later on. But the sway bar, all that does is it just reduces the roll of the, of the body relative to the, to the drive system, you know, to the axle and stuff like that. So a sway bar would just keep the car, you know, more planted, more, more level. This bar won't do that in the same way that a sway bar does, but it will keep the axle center, which is what I want. I want, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want my tires rubbing on the inside of the, of the quarter panels and self-centering themselves. I want, to, <laughs> I want this pan hard bar to do the work. So also, real quick guys, don't forget there's that, uh, that cr the, the checkout code cruise view when you go to Meyer Racing and whether you buy you know, this pan hard bar or any of the other suspension components or their body components, bumpers, all that kind of stuff, it'll save you 5% on your purchase and uh, that's a win, right? So cruise view on the, on the checkout when you guys go there. So guys, that's it. That takes care of this install. I'm going to go drive the car. I'm anxious to see how it does. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. If you guys liked the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.